In this video, I'm looking at electrode or reduction potentials. So on the board there, I've got three half equations and straight away I need to point out that these are always written as reduction processes. So we've got the particle on the left hand side gaining electrons to form the particle on the right hand side. The other important thing to point out is we always have two different oxidation states in the half equation. So you can see in orange there I've put the oxidation states of the particles. So in the first one we've got copper in plus two oxidation state in equilibrium with the zero oxidation state. And to change oxidation states we obviously involve electrons. So you'll notice I've added some voltages now to each of these half equations and this symbol here, E standard, stands for the standard electrode potential. So we just think about these as, as voltages. What does the magnitude and the sign of the voltage tell us? Well, the standard electrode potential is a measure of the ability of a species to accept electrons. So that's why they're also known as reduction potentials because it's telling us how able is the thing on the left, how able is it to be reduced by gaining the electrons. So you'll notice there we've got this one here, the chlorine chloride half equation has a standard electrode potential of plus 1.36 volts. The important thing here is this out of these three this is the most positive of the voltages. So what does that tell us? It means that out of these three chlorine is the most able to gain electrons. So the next most able is copper, copper 2 plus sorry, and the least able to gain electrons would be the V2 plus ion. So you can see I've added some detail now. So chlorine, most able to gain electrons from these three. V2 plus is the least able to gain electrons out of these three. And if we think about our definition for an oxidizing agent, oxidizing agents are electron acceptors. And so again, out of these three here, Chlorine Cl2 is the most powerful oxidizing agent of those three. And how can we tell? We could tell that because of the size of the standard electrode potential. The more positive the standard electrode potential, the more able the species that can gain electrons in the half equation will gain electrons. Now, before we go any further, you might notice that I've changed this half equation ever so slightly. Instead of having Cl2 gaining two electrons in equilibrium with two Cl minuses, I've just balanced it differently. And you'll notice that the electrode potential hasn't changed. And that's because, just because we've balanced it differently, that doesn't mean that it's going to change or affect the ability for this particle to gain electrons. So it doesn't matter how you balance these, the standard electrode potential never changes. And that's going to come in really important when we start combining two half equations to get the overall equation. And remember when you balance half equations the, the important thing is to get the electrons to cancel. Then you have to multiply some by a different number to get the electrons equal. The important thing in standard electrode potential chemistry, you don't multiply the voltage. It always stays the same as it's given in the question. So we'll just do a quick summary at this point. Standard electrode potentials give us a measure of the ability of a species to gain electrons. The more positive the standard electrode potential, the greater the ability to gain the electrons. So we're going to look at what we can use standard electrode potentials for now. So I've lost the chlorine half equation. I've just got the copper 2 plus copper equilibrium 
and the V2 plus V equilibrium. So imagine if we combine these two um, systems together, we can use the standard electrical potentials to determine what is going to happen, which reaction should happen, and where these are used is in the production of an electric current because we can get the electrons to flow in a particular direction all based on the relative standard electrical potential values. So let's just take stock of what we know so far. We know that this is the more positive standard electrical potential and so this can accept electrons more readily than the V2 plus. So if you combine these two half equations together, we actually call them half cells. I'll come on to that in a, in a, a little bit later in the video. What that means is this half equation here will proceed in the forward direction because it's better at accepting electrons. And so what will that do to this half equation? Well, it's going to force it in the reverse direction. So in other words, what's going to happen is the copper 2 plus ions are going to take two electrons from, well, what can I take electrons from in this half cell or half equation? It's the vanadium. So copper 2 plus ions will gain electrons and turn into copper. And to make that happen, the V um, solid, the atom, has to lose two electrons, so it will become V2+. plus. So by using the standard electrical potentials, we can generate the reaction that will take place when you combine two half cells, half equations together. So you can see I've written at the bottom there a kind of answer you would give. The reason this reaction takes place, this reaction, and not the other way around, is because copper 2 plus ions are more powerful oxidizing agents than V2 plus ions. How do we know that? Because of the more positive standard electrical potential for this half cell. So they can oxidize V to V2 plus. And the other thing we can do is we can actually calculate the voltage that would be created by combining these two half cells together. And that we call that the E cell, the voltage of the cell. And the way we do that is we take the always take the more positive electrical potential and subtract from that the least positive one. So in this case, we've got a negative um, standard electrical potential for the least positive one. Sometimes that might just be less positive than that one. But in this case, we've got 0.34 minus minus 1.2, and therefore we get a, a voltage in this uh, between these two of 1.54 volts. So we'll apply what we've learned so far to this question. So the question is, can chlorine oxidize a solution of iron 2 plus ions to iron 3 plus? And we're given the standard electrical potentials for the two half equations or half cells involved in the process. So the first thing I would say is look at the values, establish the more positive one, and that's going to tell you which of these half cells or half equations is going to proceed in the forwards direction, i.e. left to right. And the less positive one will have to go in the reverse direction. So let's have a look. We've got, this is the more positive one, plus 1.36, obviously greater than plus 0.77. And so therefore, this one has to go in reverse. Now, establish... Well, what would the reaction be? So the electrons are the same, so we don't need to multiply anything. So we've got half Cl2 is going to steal an electron from the Fe2 plus and convert that to Fe3 plus. And the chlorine gain in that electron would become a chloride ion. So is that 
the process in the question? Yes, it is, because iron 2 plus is being oxidized to iron 3 plus. And so we can say, yes, chlorine is a powerful enough oxidizing agent to do that oxidation process. And while we're at it, we might as well work out the voltage of the cell or E cell. More positive, minus less positive, and we get 0.59 volts. And we'll just finish off with this one. I've changed the halogen from chlorine to iodine. Same question. Can iodine now oxidize a solution of iron 2 plus to 3 plus, given the standard electrode potentials? So if you want to pause and have a go at this, and then I'll go through the answer. So again, same method. Look at the standard electrode potentials. This one is the more positive one. And so the iron 3 plus will proceed in the forwards direction, which will therefore mean this one is driven in the reverse direction. And so what's going to be the reaction between these two systems or within this system we're actually going to get iron 3 plus is going to gain an electron from the iodide ion and that will produce iron 2 plus and we'll get half a mole of i2 produced as well and so is that reaction what's being asked in the question is iodine oxidizing iron 2 to 3? No. What's happening is iron 3 plus is oxidizing iodide ions to iodine. So, how could we answer the question? We could say um, iodine isn't a powerful enough oxidizing agent. Iron 3 plus is the more powerful oxidizing agent because it has the more positive standard electrode potential.